For many Real Housewives aficionados, the Real Housewives of New York is the crown jewel in Bravo's cap, and it's easy to see why. The New York ladies are hysterical and have given us so many memorable moments, plus the show has a long-running, consistent cast with deep relationships. Because of its stellar history, it's totally heartbreaking to see the show having lost so much of its luster in recent years. But still, I believe in my heart of hearts that the show can be saved, so I wanted to take a little bit of time and speculate on what could potentially restore Roni to its earlier glory. I'm going to start by looking at the series as it stands on the heels of season 13 and assess what's not working. Then I'm going to run through some potential paths the series can go. I'll put timestamps in the description just in case you want to skip ahead. Let's begin by talking about what went wrong with season 13, which was so bad it didn't even get a reunion. I think there were a couple of issues at play that made the season so awful. The first issue, which wasn't the show's fault, was of course COVID. Nearly every franchise had a lackluster COVID season, with the exception of Beverly Hills, which benefited from the Erica Jane mask, and Potomac, which is just a stable franchise. New York also had especially rigid COVID restrictions, so, as my English teacher might say, the sixth housewife of the city itself was really not present. We had a lot of costume parties and time cooped up indoors and on buses, plus we had weird time passes due to filming shutting down. The second issue was that it was an incredibly heavy season. Along with COVID, the season featured the 2020 election and a lot of discourse on racism. While all of these things are obviously important to discuss and really reflect what was going on in society at the time, it left a lot of viewers exhausted as we were living through the same experiences in our daily lives. It also brought forward Ramona and Luann's racism, whether they're conscious of it or not, to the point where it was incredibly overt and had to be confronted. We also had deaths and trauma and grief, All this would be fine if there were enough light and silly moments to break up some of the tension, but we really didn't get much in the way of that. The ones they tried really weren't funny or memorable, and it truly became a chore rather than a delight to watch. The last issue was that the cast really didn't have much chemistry. Luann, Ramona, and Sonia were close. This was actually a good season for the Ramona and Lou friendship, but Leah and Ebony didn't really make sense to be hanging out with the group. It became obvious that they were co-workers rather than friends organically hanging out. Roni is usually the best at seeming natural, but this cast just really wasn't working. I think that the first two issues will resolve themselves with the next season. COVID restrictions have relaxed and the temperature of the country has been reduced, but there needs to be some major changes with the cast dynamic. Bravo had said when the season was airing that it was a cast to build off of, but after seeing the completed season, it's glaringly obvious that this cast as it stands just does not work. So I next want to look at the season 13 cast and talk through if they're working on the show or not and whether I think they should stay or not. Let's start with Leah McSweeney, who took a nosedive in popularity for her second season. I think Leah's issue is that she tries very hard to be provocative. I think she always wants to keep the audience guessing, but this backfires as it makes it hard to follow where her values and loyalties lie as they change so often, so it becomes hard to connect with her, meaning that we as the audience struggle to feel emotionally invested in her. She also feels a bit put on, like she's trying very hard to make for iconic moments. I think that she's very much a student of the Housewives game in the way that Whitney Rose from Salt Lake City and Noella from Orange County are. I do think that we as an audience need to get used to super fans becoming Housewives as the show has become such a cultural phenomenon. We are a pop icon. This show is pop icon. But Leah isn't really able to pull it off. She could potentially work as a friend of, as she's not afraid to stir the pot, but her personal storylines are painful to get through, so for that reason, I think most people would support Leah exiting the series. Let's move on and talk about Ebony K. Williams, Roni's most recent addition. So Ebony was put in a really awkward position upon joining the show. She started filming in the fall of 2020, shortly after the murder of George Floyd, which kicked off a new wave in civil rights discourse. The treatment and experience of Black Americans was on everyone's mind, and because Ebony was New York's first Black housewife, I'm sure she felt pressure, both internally and externally, to use the platform to educate both the other housewives and the audience on her experience living as a Black woman. The problem was that she was the only Black housewife, until Bershawn, Ramona's friend, joined about halfway through, and the two didn't really naturally mesh. Garcelle from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has talked about how she often feels alienated from the rest of the cast as the only black woman in the group, and I wonder if Ebony experiences similar emotions. Ebony is also a very serious woman with a background as a lawyer and political commentator, so though using her platform to educate her fellow housewives on racism may have felt natural to her, her pupils were not so receptive, so it didn't really land all that well. Her castmates are a silly bunch who focus much more on partying and getting into antics rather than focusing on more serious storylines, so she didn't really mesh well with the current cast. I'm not sure if the Housewives brand is the best avenue for her. Others have mentioned her wanting to foray the spot into a position on a show like The View, which I think might be a better fit than Housewives. 
But even with that, I think if Ebony wants another chance, I'm not against her getting one. It's probably a bit nerve-wracking to join such an established cast, so some of her rigidness could have just been first season jitters and she could feel a bit more at ease with the second season. I think if she learns to balance her serious side with a bit more lightheartedness, she could really work on the show. I also think if she had a fellow cast member who was more at her level intellectually, she might fit in a bit better. I think it's also not fair to have her as the only housewife of color on a cast with questionable views on race. So if she was with the right people, I really think that Ebony could still continue on the series. All right, so let's get into Lumonia, our core trio who have kept the franchise afloat for years. These women have given so much to us over their decade plus on the show, but you have to wonder if they have more to give and if investing in them is investing in the future of the show. There's also the question of if they are a positive for the show and if the show is a positive for them. Let's discuss each individually. I think the trickiest one is Ramona. Ramona always delivers the drama and entertainment, plus has a pool of at least 60 close girlfriends to cast within. But after years of behaving badly, seeing her react to Ebony tipped many fans over the edge and an onslaught of questions began to arise regarding Ramona being racist. Whereas before people could turn away from it to some degree and not acknowledge the truth, with season 13 this became impossible to do. But the majority of fans in the network have taken a stance against this type of behavior, so it'll be interesting to see how the network handles her. Ramona has been our mainstay on this series, and I think it would be hard to imagine the show without her, but OC moved on without Vicky, and Atlanta went on without Nini, so I don't think them cutting the cord on her is completely out of the question. But let's move on to Sonia Morgan, who is almost universally beloved by fans for her goofy antics and genuinely kind heart. I think the question with Sonia is if the show is a good fit for her. She's been in a bit of a state of arrested development since she joined the show and that we haven't really seen her make any major life moves in the decade plus she's been on the show. I know the show provides her a lot of support, especially financially, but if you follow her on social media in the off season, she always seems so much happier and healthier. I think Sonia has endeared us all to the point where we really just want what's best for her. And now on to the Countess. Luann has an extraordinary ability to reinvent herself. She's had an etiquette phase, a pop star phase, a man eater phase, a sloppy phase, a zen wen phase. I could continue on and on. Because of this ability, I can see Luann staying on the show for years to come. She also doesn't tend to make incredibly deep connections, so I think that she could just kind of do her own thing on a cast with anybody. I think even though she's gone through some major downtimes on the show, I don't think the show itself has a detrimental effect on Lou in the way that it does Sonya. I think the true question is how the audience feels about her. At what point do we become exhausted with her shtick? So to answer the question of if the core three should stay, I think there's a scenario where it could happen, which leads us to direction one, old school. I think there could be a great option for Roni to go full in with what they already know and have a cast consisting of Luann, Ramona, and Sonia, then round it out by bringing back Dorinda and Jill Zarin. These women all know each other very well, having relationships going back decades in some cases. There's a lot of organic tension within the group, so we could have the makings for some really great drama. I think Dorinda and Jill would both really bring it, as both seem to really miss their time on the show. I think it might also change up the dynamic between Ramona, Luann, and Sonia, who despite bickering have remained mostly aligned for the past few years. Jill seems to be close with Luann, but does not get along with Ramona. This might make Lou have to choose sides between the two. I think we'd have a really solid cast of Roni Titans if they went in this direction, but I think there might be two issues that could arise. First, it may be difficult for any newbies to infiltrate this group with such a history. They'd really have to pull from the existing circles of these women. I think finding people Jill knows might be the way to go, as she was largely the thing for the OG cast back in the day and seems to be quite the networker. The second issue would be diversity. Both Bravo and viewers have pledged that they want to see a diverse cast, but we've seen that inserting random women into this cast doesn't really work. I think most viewers prefer an organic group of friends over a group of women who are clear co-workers. If they added in a few women of color to this OG group, I think it may feel disjointed. We've also seen that Ramona, and to a lesser extent Luann, don't do well with discussions about race, so I guess they'd have to find women of color who aren't very outspoken on the topic and don't mind being on a cast with Ramona, or else we'd run into the same tensions that came up in season 13. Obviously, Bershawn, the friend from season 13, is a potential option, so they could maybe go in that direction. I didn't form any real strong opinion on her, but she did join halfway through, so maybe if we got a full season of her, we could get a bit more emotionally invested in her story. I just think it would be hard to find random newbies that can reasonably fit in with such a tight-knit core. I'm also not sure that investing in this cast is investing in the future of the franchise. I think it's great to see women in their late 50s and 60s living it up on the screen, and I really think that one of the greatest things that the Housewives universe as a whole has done is glorify older women, but could this cast maintain itself for the next decade? Probably not. So that's why I want to propose scenario two, the new wave. 
So just a warning, this is going to be a shakeup like never done before. But still, I don't think we can start completely from scratch. I think viewers need a familiar face to feel anchored to the show, which is why I'm going to propose that Bravo brings back Tinsley Mortimer and centers the series around her. This might seem odd, as Tinsley didn't seem to have the chops to carry the show when she was initially on, but I think that's largely due to her positioning within the existing cast at the time. Tinsley always had little sister vibes. She already reads younger than she is due to her hair and the dresses and all of that, but she was also significantly younger than the established cast when she was on and wasn't given a lot of respect by the other ladies. She was relegated to more of a supporting role, but I think if the show was centered around her, she could really bring it. It's been highlighted a bit on the show, but if you really dig into Tinsley's past, it's absolutely fascinating. She was the it girl of the 2000s, and I think if the show really leaned into that aspect, we could have more of a socialite type of show, which I find incredibly alluring. But of course, Tinsley couldn't be the sole cast member, so I have some ideas for potential other housewives. The person I'd cast as our adversary would be Olivia Palermo, a fellow former socialite who is best known as the villain on The City, which was a spinoff of The Hills set in New York. I found The City boring for the most part, but Olivia was the best thing about it. She was emotional, cunning, and incredibly stylish. She was the only person besides Whitney that I even remember from the series. She was the villain on The City, but she's very telegenic in my opinion. Why I put her against Tinsley is because they allegedly had a lot of tension in their socialite days. I'll link some articles if you want to go down the rabbit hole, but basically Olivia was the newcomer when Tinsley was the main character on the scene. There are rumors that the two feuded, so if there was any meat to that story, I think we could see a resurgence on The Real Housewives in New York. I also think there could be a bit of a switch up in their power struggle that would be really interesting to watch. In the 2000s, Tinsley was married into a very prominent family and was highly in demand, while Olivia was a student who was allegedly desperate to break out into the scene. Now it appears that Olivia really has it all with a super hot husband and a thriving career in the fashion world. Tinsley, as we all know, has had some struggles in recent years and is coming off of a major heartbreak. I think because the power has shifted a bit, we could see a much more even match and it could lay the foundation for some really interesting social dynamics. I'm not totally sure if Olivia would even do this show, as I watched some clips of interviews where she didn't seem keen on her time on the city, but The Real Housewives is such a juggernaut, and at least back in the day, she seemed a bit fame-hungry, so it may be a hard opportunity to pass up if it was offered. To find some other potential cast members, I watched Tinsley's first show, which was called High Society and aired on The CW in 2010. It was all about socialites living their lives in New York. A few of the cast members were truly awful, but one who came off well was Tinsley's sister, Dabney. I couldn't quite establish if she lives in New York, but Tinsley didn't when she was initially cast on the show, so I don't think that really matters. Also, having Tinsley's little sister there could kind of validate Tins as the queen bee. Historically, having family members can be a really good thing for shows because the tensions run deep and they're not afraid to fight, but then make up. Having the Mercer girls would also mean a lot of Dale content, which I fully support. I really enjoyed her time on Roni, and some of Tinsley's most memorable moments occurred with her. On High Society, Dale starts investigating Tinsley's new boyfriend, who's a German prince, to see if his family had Nazi ties, so I'd love to see more of that type of meddling. Dale really makes for great television. Tinsley also had somewhat of an adversary on the show named Devorah Rose, who is the editor-in-chief of Social Life magazine. Devorah claimed to have invented and legitimized Tinsley as the top socialite, but then felt snubbed by her, leading to some super petty drama involving magazine articles and confrontations at events. This is obviously very stale drama, but it shows that at least at a time, Devorah was not above stirring the pot and making moments. She was also involved in that socialite lifestyle at the time. I don't know if she'd work on Real Housewives, but she's the best non-Dabney option we saw on High Society. My last pick is Anisha, who filmed a scene with Tinsley in season 9. We only got a little bit of her when the two went on a walk through the city, but Anisha demonstrated her fondness for pulling wacky antics when she guided her puppy in a remote-controlled G-Wagon through the city. This intrigued me enough to Google her, and I found that she used to be a teacher and wrote a book about her experience teaching wealthy New York students. I think she could provide some fun, light-hearted moments while also being a bit more of an intellectual, given her past life as a teacher and a writer. Having someone like her could potentially also bring back Ebony, so I could see it possibly working. I really don't know much about her, but I think she could be a fun potential option for the show. So this is obviously not necessarily how they go in terms of casting around Tinsley, but I just wanted to dip into her past pool and show that there's a lot of potential there. I'm sure there's many more people beyond this handful I mentioned that could truly work on this show. I think these former It Girls of yesteryear could bring a fresh feel and open us up to a new side of New York City. I also think that going a bit younger with casting would ensure that the show is able to live on for seasons more. 
I wanted to wrap up with a quick discussion on two former housewives I would love to see back as well. First is, of course, Bethany Frankel. I'm not a crazy Bethany stan, but I do think that, on balance, the season she's on are far better than the season she's not. She has an electricity that really lights up the show. Her confessionals are absolutely hysterical, and she can be so acrid that she's going to have conflict with the women whenever she's on. I'll always hold out hope, but I'm not sure if we'll see B back. She's made a lot of negative remarks about the show not portraying women in a positive light, and seems to have thrown her focus into her incredible charitable organization, Be Strong. There have also been rumors that she's requested something that the network can't give her, but we as an audience haven't been let into what exactly that is. I also read somewhere that she wanted $5 million to be on, but that's obviously ridiculous. Still, I do think Bethany really loves the spotlight, both for personal reasons and to promote her businesses, and since her businesswoman show was not successful, I don't think it's out of the question that she may eventually cave in return, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The second person I'd love to have back is Carol Radziwell. I love her. I think she's so cool and smart and has lived such an interesting life. And I know her last season wasn't great. I think she let the show get to her by the end more than she had in earlier seasons. She was also kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel with her personal storylines. Plus, Bethany is a hard person to go up against, especially once the show airs and you have to deal with Bee's fan base. But I think after a bit of time off, she could come back and be the old cool Carol again. I think she'd be a really fun addition if we had the OG cast in my first scenario, and if Bethany weren't on, she could ease into things. So those are my thoughts on how to save Roni. I'm curious what others think. Do you like either of my ideas, or do you have any other ideas? Please let me know. I think more minds are better to workshop getting our beloved show back on track. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm working on a similar video about OC, so if you have any thoughts regarding that, feel free to send them my way. You can comment on the video or send me a message on Instagram or Twitter. I'll put my username in the description of this video. All right, well, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I party with John John Kenny and Madonna all the time. Well, John John's dead, so that's difficult. Mom,